What up guys, DLE Kamel here, and I'm here to talk about Force of Infinity, the new mini box that just came out. Sorry about the weird camera view today. I just got some of my new equipment, but not all of it's here, so I moved some stuff around. I didn't quite finish, so that's why it's looking kind of funny. So let's get right into it without further ado. Forces of Infinity, this is the notorious December bait mini box right before the Duel Links 5th anniversary half price gem sale, dream tickets, and a new selection box. Remember, all of that comes in January, next month. We're one month away from all that coming to the game. And this is the last box before the New Year's Eve or the New Year's Day, whichever you see it as, main box that will come out and then will be followed by the Duel Links Anniversary. And with this mini box, it seems like Konami is going on something a lot more focused. They're honing in specifically on three archetypes and as they usually have been doing in mini boxes and giving us a little bit of support for each of them. The archetypes are not what I would call the most uh, you know, intriguing, but you know, we shall see. Uh, so the first entire archetype, which is the cover card of the box, I guess we should talk about is mech lords, dude. Mech lords have not been able to find any traction in Duel Links whatsoever since their inception. They've always kind of just existed and new cards come out right after we get out of an era where there are very dominant synchro monsters. So we're actually picking up a, a few, quite a few very good Mechlord cards, very impactful ones. Of course, there's Super Boss Monster, Mechlord Astro, Mechanical. Uh, must be summoned by sending three Mechlord monsters from your hand to the graveyard, so you're already losing your entire hand. Four cards, plus including this card in your hand, must be sent. And then you target a synchro your opponent controls, equip it. And it gains a attack during your standby phase. You can send one of those equipped monsters you control to the graveyard and flip damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. So yeah, this is essentially supposed to be used against synchro decks where they're going to be synchro summoning multiple times because they are all in on synchro summoning and you're just able to suck them up turn after turn. So summoning something like this would be pretty nice against Harpies. However, you have to take into effect that this guy, you know, he doesn't have an effect on the opponent's turn. It's just once per turn, he sucks them up on your own turn and nothing on your opponent's turn. So you are still left very vulnerable there. Other Mechlord cards, we got Mechlord Assembly. This is a continuous spell. When it's activated, you can add a Mechlord from your deck to your hand. And then you can discard a card and target one monster you control, destroy it. A face-up Mechlord monster you control, destroy by battle or card effect. You can target one other face-up spell trap on the field, destroy it. So... The first effect, destroying a monster is going to summon your Mechlord. That's why that is so important. And then if a face-up Mechlord monster it would, be de would be destroyed or is destroyed, you can then target another spell trap and get rid of it. So it has to be face-up. So you're probably going to be opting in on pendulums and like, I don't know, dude, like whatever stuff your opponent has in their back row. That seems pretty, uh, you know, situational, but it's a pretty good effect. It's going to make summoning your mech lords very consistent. And then we have Synchro Absorption, which was previously only accessible via a skill, but now we do have Mech Lord Emperor Rizal Synchro Absorption. And dude, I am not hyped for mech lords in the slightest. I, I don't think that they are a competent deck in Duel Links. The large monster core with all of the mech lord emperors that you have to carry and the effects for them to destroy you have to play a ton of cards in order to take advantage of a very small power spike and i don't think that that is um good enough for mech lords i'll read this card i actually did not read this card before during your main phase you're going to activate this effect destroy this card and if you do special summon two mech lord army monsters from your deck in defense positions except mech lord army this guy you cannot special summon for the rest of the tricks that we sheet if this card is sent to the graveyard you can activate this effect during the end phase of this turn, you can flip 50 for each mech lord. Okay, bro. 50 for each mech lord. That is kind of weird. Alright, man. Whatever. But yeah, like I said, I'm not feeling mech lords. I think that this being one of the last 5D story events where they're closing up the mech lord storyline. I hope this is it, dude. I don't want to see mech lords in boxes ever again. They are, they're garbage. 
All right, but let's get into the next archetype, which I am pretty interested in, and that is Abyss Actors. Abyss Actors, Sawataris, Ace Monster, Abyss Actors Superstar is a, is a UR in this box. Level 7, Scale 3. It's a pendulum effect. You contribute an Abyss Actor, then target one Abyss script in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and then when it's normal special summon, your opponent cannot activate explosive traps. Once we're turning the set in the Abyss script spell directly from your deck. So the really cool thing I like about Abyss Actors is that all of these spell and traps that you are getting out from your monster effects they all have anti-destruction protection so that your opponent is incentivized not to destroy them before they activate so they actually want them these cards to be activated because they all have some pretty nutty effects when they're destroyed and we'll get to those the other main or i should say one of the other main abyss actor monsters that's definitely going to be a core part of the deck is mellow madonna so this has a very very powerful search and summon effect both of its effects pendulum and monster are super powerful pay a thousand add an abyss mo actor pendulum monster from your deck to your hand very very simple very very powerful and then it's a monster effect uh gains 100 for each abyss in your abyss script in your graveyard and then when a pendulum monster you control is destroyed by battle you can special summon this card from your hand so it's like a little Aramage Marjoram kind of effect. If the, if an Abyss script spell card is activated, you can special summon one level four or lower Abyss actor Pendulum Monster from your deck, but return it to the hand during the end phase. So this effect specifically, its second effect, Monster Effect, is going to come in clutch so many times because we're getting a lot of good level four or lower uh, Abyss actors with this new box. One of those being Abyss actor Wild Hope. So you can target one Abyss Actor card in your Pendulum Zone. Its Pendulum skill becomes 9. So this is going to let you bring out your Superstar and your Mellow Madonna via Pendulum Summon very easy until the end of this turn. Uh, yeah, only Abyss Actor special Summon. And then it gains 100 attack for each Abyss Actor monster you currently control with different names. And if it is destroyed by a Battle or Card Effect, you can add one Abyss Actor card from your deck to your hand. Except Abyss Actor Wild Hope. So... Were this to be destroyed, this is something that you can easily just set and it will search you something else and then it will be heading to the Pendulum Zone right after, to not the Pendulum Zone, excuse me, your extra deck where your face-up Pendulum Monsters will be going and you'll see there are some other Abyss Actor effects. This guy really nice, making uh, giving you access to scale 9s very readily on a level 4 or lower uh, Abyss Actor, pretty good. So the other Abyss actors we all have are part of Sawatari's NPC deck, so they're just giving us these. The standout one here, I think, is going to be Abyss actor Sassy Rookie. These other level 4s, they're kind of just like whatever. Evil Heal is just like your big 3000 guy who just lowers your opponent to nothing. And, you know, just makes it so you can deal big damage. And then Sassy Rookie, he cannot be destroyed uh, once per turn. And then his pendulum effect is he prevents something else from being destroyed so he kind of does that job twice and then if this card is destroyed after it uses its destruction protection you can special summon one level four lower abyss actor monster from your deck and that's it it stays boom it's just out on the field except this card so that is pretty nice so some of these abyss scripts let's read them one of the most powerful ones is right here, Abyss Script, Rise of the Abyss King. Normal spell, you are going to target face-up cards on the field up to the number of attack position Abyss Actor monsters with different names you control. Destroy them. If you control a level 7 or higher Abyss Actor monster, you cannot. your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. Whoa. So that is massive. If you do control one of your level 7 or higher, which is the Mellow Madonna, the superstar or the evil heal your opponent should not be able to chain you know like forbidden lands to make your opponents to make their monsters indestructible this card is just going to go off and it is going to resolve and that is huge right that's always what we're talking about big powerful destruction effects as a part of these decks they need to be readily available and you'll have access to that effect as long as you have access to this card of course, you're going to have to get it from your deck somehow. Abyss uh, Superstar here will send them from your deck to the graveyard, and then you just somehow have to, you know, get it from your graveyard to your deck, to your hand. Oh, wait. 
Superstar's other pendulum effect, you contributed to Abyss Hector Monster, then targeted Abyss script and your spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So I think there are some other ways, easy ways to add Abyss scripts to the hand. But yeah, and essentially its destruction protection effect is pretty nice if it is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and you have a face up Abyss Actor Pendulum Monster, you can add up to two Abyss Actor cards and or Abyss script spells with different names to your deck to your hand so super consistency you get if it is destroyed and uh yeah this one over here wild wagon what does this do this gives abyss actors destruction protection once per turn and uh yeah your opponent cannot target abyss actors with anything your opponent cannot target with card effects until the end of their turn even if this card loses a field, so this card, that effect remains. And then it's destruction protection. If you have an Abyss Actor Pendulum Monster, you can return all cards your opponent controls to the hand. That is massive, dude. You might almost want to play this and set it to bluff it to think, get your opponent to think it's like TTH or something. I don't know, dude. To try to destroy it because that is just, that is insane. All right, I don't want to read every card here, just want to go over that. I really do think that Abyss Actors have the potential here to become a deck. There's a lot of moving pieces, and they've gotten a lot of the big power op, big power cards that they've needed to really pop off. Uh, let's just look. I was looking up Dino Miss earlier. Let's take a look at Abyss Actors. I know we're still missing a decent amount of the archetype. So we don't have, oh, we have a lot of it. We are just missing some some of these cards. Let me know how some of these other Abyss Actors that we don't have yet, how good they are. Let me know what we're missing for Abyss Actors because it does look like we've gotten a lot here and we've got some other good cards already in the game. Like Fantasy Magic, dude, when your Abyss Monsters battle, you bounce your, the other opponents afterwards. Super, super crazy. So yeah, Abyss Actors. I think they have a lot of up-and-coming potential, and uh, I will be excited to play them. You guys know I like my Sawatari, and really quickly, while I have this open, I thought we would take a look over at Duel Links to see what skill we'd play on with uh, Abyss Actors, and I do think that I'm going to be using Silvio's Showstopping Performance. This is your generic uh, Destiny Draw copy skill. You take 1500 and you get to draw an abyss actor or you'll send you of course you're going to be using this to draw an abyss actor not an abyss script an abyss actor monster and in addition add a pendulum zones to your field if you can be begin to duel with nine or more abyss actor pendulum monsters so you will be getting pendulum zones and you'll you're going to be getting that free search for 1500 damage pretty nice and look dude that 1500 damage, you're going to be able to proc that yourself with Mellow Madonna's effect, dude. That is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie, dude. I am not going to lie. That is pretty darn good. So the next archetype that I wanted to talk about is Dino Mist, dude. So Dino Mist, fun fact, dude. I think that this is one of the most complete archetypes that we have gotten in dueling so far. Just really quick, quickly. If you search Dino Mist on DLM, we have the entire Dino Mist archetype except for one card, Dino Mist Howling. More on that after we talk about the ones that we have. You'll see why we don't have it. But the only SR Dino, Dino Mist monster is Dino Mist Rex. This is a level 5, scale 6. All of the Dino Mist scale 6 have the same pendulum effect, and all the Dino Mist scale 3s have the same pendulum effect so once while this card is in your pendulum zone you can negate an activation an activated card that targets another dynamis card you control then destroy this card so always nice to keep a scale six in your pendulum zones when you're playing dynamis at the end of the damage step if this card attacked you contribute one other dynamis monster then activate one of these effects this card can attack an opponent's monster gain again in a row also if it attacks a defensive vision monster against piercing shuffle one card from your opponent's hand at random or field into the deck then this card gains 1000 gains attack on 100 so shuffle one card from your opponent's hand and if it's hand it's random or you get to choose on the field i would very much assume so that you get to choose uh what card you get to send when it's on the field and that is pretty nice you shuffle it back into the deck just after the card attacks it does not need to deal battle damage so that is pretty versatile not such a huge activation requirement for its effect 
And, uh, you know, it's a generally useful interruption effect, dude. I'll take the shuffling a uh, monster back into the deck. You know, one card, excuse me, one card. So spell, trap, monster, pendulum zone, anything. Pretty nice for a boss monster. The other, only other SR for Dynamis is Dynamis Charge. When this card is activated, add one Dynamis monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, if Dynamis cards is added from the field to your extra deck, face up, add one of those cards to your hand. You can only activate one Dynamis Charge per turn. So this is going to be proccing every time one of your Dynamis activates their pendulum effect and they destroy themselves. But more importantly, this is a search on activation, which is pretty darn nice. This is essentially Dynamis Tanky, and uh, this is a mini box. I don't. I hate to burst your free to play bubble, but this is a card you're definitely gonna need three of. It is making the consistency in this deck happen, dude. So yeah, and I guess I'll read a couple of these uh, other monsters. Some of them I found were pretty powerful. Others. Maybe not so much, but it is very interesting that they did decide to give us nearly the entire archetype. So, uh, which ones that I find interesting? This one, Dynamis Spinos, Pendulum Effect. It is a scale three, so it can prevent the destruction of a Dynamis monster and destroy this in its place, which will also proc Dynamis Charge. And then Dynamis Spinos says you contribute one of the Dynamis monster, then activate one of these effects. This card could attack your opponent directly this turn. Or this card can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Whoa. And in duelings, dude, if you resolve this effect and your opponent does not have back row, or even if you have, like, a card like Forbidden Lance, you are doing massive damage to your opponent. You're lowering yourself by 800, going down to 1700. You're gonna still go going to attack twice. You know, there are a lot of plays to be made with this card. I, mean, I think this is honestly... A better game ender than Dynamis Rex, dude. Dynamis Spinos, insane. There's another Dynamis card monster I wanted to talk, and that's Aklios. It's a monster effect. It says banish any monster destroyed by battle with a Dynamis monster you control. And this guy just has to be on the field for this card for this effect to activate. Not too huge, but it is an active effect that just applies to all Dynamis monsters once he is face up. Uh, so what this guy special summons himself. He's a level five And I think that's it dude this Pateran when it destroys the bones monster about you can add a dynamis It's 1800. Do you not think you're destroying anything? All right So those are oh the last thing I wanted to show you was the only card that we do not currently have in dynamis We have every card in the archetype except for this it's very rare that this happens in dueling. So this says, when this card is activated, you can place one or two Dynamis Pendulum Monsters from your deck in your Pendulum Zone busted. You just get free Pendulum uh, uh, Scales. But you cannot Pendulum Summon Monsters until the end of the next turn. Oh, okay. Except Dynamis, oh, except Dynamis Monsters, even if this card loses a field. Once per turn, if this card is already face up in your Spell and Trap card zone, you contribute one Dynamis Monster, then target one card your Pokemon Control's return to the hand. Well, the value just is oozing off of this card, and this would break Dynamis so much in Duelist, but it would make them a meta deck. And it makes me wonder, this entire archetype is in Duelings, except for this one card. When could this one card ever come to Duelings? When could it ever come? And the only way I can think is that some way down the line, during Link era, or maybe farther down the, the line this year, or in 2022, there's a main box, and one of the URs is Dynamis Howling. That's the only way. But right now, I think Konami wants to see how good this deck is. This is the most complete Pendulum deck we've gotten in the game so far. All of its support, except for a single card. So, I have high hopes for Dynamis. I think people are going to make some fun decks. But of course, you know, the deck does seem pretty susceptible to you know just flip downs not being able to do it do what you want it to do but it does have some protection against some of the traditionally powerful cards that we know of such as tth all right so one more thing we wanted to talk about in this little box review and that is santa claus a lot of people were talking about this card i've never heard of it before today this is a level, a level 6 Light Fiend. You can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's side field in defense position by attributing one monster to control. If summoned this way once during the end phase of this turn, you can draw one card. So 
You give your opponent this monster, hopefully tributing their crazy good boss monster. And if it is summoned this way, uh, you draw a card. So I assume your opponent draws the card. All right. So uh, all I have to say about this is this is a new, really good... Yeah, it's a new really good removal option, especially when Melodious and Bloom Diva are becoming some menaces in the meta. This is probably the most versatile one of these uh, generic removal options because you get to keep your normal summon. It's, this is a special summon from the hand, unlike Lava Golem or Volcanic Queen, where that eats up your normal summon. This will still allow you to normal summon afterwards. And I think that that's a powerful tech card for tournaments. So if you are a tournament player, you definitely want to pick that up. And guys, I honestly think I'm going to call it there. I did not see anything else in this box that was even remotely interesting, dude. I'm surprised I even read Mech Lords, dude. They don't interest me in the slightest. This Odd Eye support, it does not interest me in the slightest. We're going to need to see a way more complete version of Odd Eyes before those cards even become worth looking at. And as usual, just a bunch of crappy reprints. Uh, I believe Mech Lords this time got all of the archetype reprints. A lot of this stuff was just trash. Uh, and even these, look, these Abyss scripts, we are also getting them for the first time. So pretty nice. And yeah, these, these are just a bunch of Mech Lord reprints and trash cards. So final thoughts on the box. I'm very excited for Abyss actors to see how their initial performance in Duel Links is out of all the protagonist decks. Melodious has done the best and Yosenju has been playable. Let's see if Sawatari can get another playable deck. Abyss actors seems like it has some really good bones to support it, especially in this post ban list meta. And Dynamis, I'm very surprised that we have so much of an archetype on release, but it does seem pretty weak these guys are not dinosaurs they are in fact machines so let me know what machine cheese you can come up with uh, but as always dude system down acid rain i don't know about machine decks becoming good let me know how you're feeling about dino mist are you dynamist and abyss actor are you excited to play them what do you think about them coming to duel links i my verdict on the box is going to be a hard skip unless you are a fan of these two archetypes they are carrying the box by far, and otherwise, I don't think this is bringing you much value. Santa Claus is good if you're a tournament player, and you could use one or two for the side deck. But other than that, I don't think that there is much value for you to get here unless you intend on fully committing on playing either Dynamist or Abyss Actors, since that is the most that you're going to be getting out of this box. So that's it for me, guys. See me later in the week, and I'll hopefully I'll have my setup a little more together. So peace out, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.